History is often written by the victors. But what if I told you that the true story of England's origins isn't just in books? It's buried deep within the DNA of its people. For centuries, the Anglo-Saxons have been seen as the very foundation of English identity. But how much of that is fact, and how much is myth? What did the genetic markers of these early settlers really look like? And, most importantly, how much of their heritage still lives on in the modern British population? Scientific breakthroughs in ancient DNA research have uncovered a hidden chapter of England's past, one that challenges long-standing assumptions and paints a much more complex picture of migration, integration, and identity. This is the untold genetic story of the Anglo-Saxons. Imagine a land in transition, Roman rule in Britain is collapsing, cities are shrinking, and new waves of people are arriving from across the North Sea. But who were these people we now call the Anglo-Saxons? Were they invaders? settlers, or something in between. Genetic research reveals a fascinating truth. The Anglo-Saxons were not a single, unified group but a mix of different Germanic tribes, Angles, Saxons, and Jutes, arriving from regions that today include Denmark, Northern Germany, and the Netherlands. For years, historians debated whether they came in a violent invasion, replacing the native Britons, or settled gradually, mixing into the population. DNA evidence is rewriting this story. Ancient skeletal remains from burial sites show that while large numbers of newcomers arrived between the 5th and 7th centuries, they didn't wipe out the local population. Instead, the genetic signature of these early medieval migrants became deeply interwoven with that of the native Britons. This means that rather than a complete replacement, England's early medieval society was a fusion of cultures, with intermarriage playing a crucial role. But what did these settlers bring with them? language, traditions, warrior culture, and new political structures, all of which would shape what we now call England. Over time, their identity evolved into something new, something uniquely English, and their genes. They still make up a significant portion of the DNA of people living in England today. Picture a time when the shores of Britain were dotted with unfamiliar sails. Groups of migrants, carrying their belongings and dreams of a new life, stepped onto foreign soil. But where exactly did they settle? And how did their arrival reshape the landscape of early England? The first waves of Anglo-Saxon migration began in the mid-5th century. Historical records, like those from Bede, speak of entire tribes crossing the North Sea. But modern genetics and archaeology tell us an even richer story. The majority of these settlers established themselves in the eastern and southeastern regions of England, Kent, East Anglia, and the Midlands. Why? because these coastal areas provided fertile land and easy access for future arrivals. However, migration didn't happen in a single event. It was a centuries-long movement, with different groups settling at different times. DNA analysis shows a concentration of early Germanic ancestry in eastern England, where nearly 76% of the genetic makeup at the time was linked to northern continental Europe. But as we move west, this percentage drops. Places like Wales, Cornwall, and the far north retained stronger genetic ties to their Celtic ancestors. Yet, settlement wasn't just about genetics. It was about identity. The Anglo-Saxons built villages, established local governance, and over time, their culture merged with the Romano-British way of life. Some towns, like Lincoln and York, retained their Roman roots, while others transformed completely into Anglo-Saxon strongholds. So, was it an invasion or a slow blending of people? The evidence suggests both. There were conflicts, but there was also assimilation. And out of this complex history, a new English identity was born, one that still echoes in the DNA of millions today. Imagine walking through a village in early medieval England. On one side of the road, you hear the distinct dialect of an Anglo-Saxon family, their speech rooted in Germanic traditions. On the other, a group of native Britons speaks a language filled with Latin and Celtic influences. Two worlds, once separate, now sharing the same land. But how did these communities interact? Was it conflict, cooperation, or something in between? For years, historians debated whether the Anglo-Saxons arrived as conquerors or gradually integrated with the local Romano-British population. The truth, as revealed by archaeology and genetics, is far more complex. While some areas saw violent clashes, burned settlements and warrior graves tell us that. Other regions show signs of peaceful coexistence. There were marriages, shared customs, and the blending of traditions. 
One of the clearest indicators of integration comes from burial sites. In regions like Kent and East Anglia, early graves show distinct Germanic burial practices, such as warriors buried with their weapons. But over time, we see these customs merging with local traditions. Women, especially, played a key role in this blending. Many were buried with personal ornaments that combined both Anglo-Saxon and Romano-British styles, suggesting that intermarriage was common. The same pattern emerges in language. Old English, which the Anglo-Saxons brought, absorbed Latin and Celtic words, proof that communication and cultural exchange were ongoing. Even in law and governance, local customs didn't disappear overnight. Instead, they were adapted into the Anglo-Saxon legal system, creating a new social order rather than completely erasing the old one. So, was this an invasion or a transformation? The evidence suggests that rather than a complete replacement of the British population, the Anglo-Saxons integrated, adapted, and ultimately reshaped England's identity through both conflict and cooperation. Picture an ordinary day in early medieval England. A farmer tends to his land, speaking Old English to his children. A blacksmith forges iron tools in a village where homes follow a Germanic architectural style. Nearby, a church stands, its Latin inscriptions a reminder of Roman influence. This is the world the Anglo-Saxons built. But what did it truly mean to be Anglo-Saxon? Was it just a genetic lineage? Or was it something deeper, an evolving cultural identity? Unlike a singular ethnic group, the Anglo-Saxons were a fusion of many peoples, Angles, Saxons, Jutes, and even local Britons who adapted to this new world. Over time, their language, laws, and customs merged into a shared identity. This transformation is most evident in the English language. Though rooted in Germanic tongues, it absorbed words from Latin, Celtic, and later Norse influences. The very name England itself comes from the Angles, but its people were far more than just migrants from Northern Europe. Religion played a crucial role in shaping this identity. The Anglo-Saxons arrived as pagans, worshipping gods like Wooden and Tuna. But as Christianity spread, their beliefs, rituals, and even their art changed. We see this in the intricate designs of illuminated manuscripts and stone carvings, where old pagan symbols blend with Christian motifs. Perhaps the strongest marker of Anglo-Saxon identity was their system of governance. They established structured kingdoms, written laws, and even the earliest forms of English justice. Concepts like Shire and Hundred Divisions, which still influence Britain today, were their creation. Their cultural legacy didn't vanish with the Norman Conquest in 1066. It adapted, influencing everything from medieval English society to modern traditions. So, was Anglo-Saxon identity something fixed in blood, or was it shaped by the blending of cultures and ideas? The answer lies in the way they built a society, one that was always evolving absorbing new influences while retaining a distinct core. This was not just a people. It was the foundation of what would become England. Imagine standing on the shores of England in the late 8th century. The sun rises over the horizon, but on the water, dark silhouettes appear, longships, cutting through the waves with terrifying speed. The Vikings have arrived, and with them, a new chapter in England's genetic and cultural history begins. For nearly 300 years, Waves of Norse invaders, Danes, Norwegians, and even Swedes raided, settled, and integrated into Anglo-Saxon society. Unlike the initial migration of the Angles, Saxons, and Jutes, which reshaped Britain's genetic makeup, the Viking influx was more complex. DNA studies suggest that while the Vikings left a genetic mark, their influence was strongest in the north and east of England, areas controlled by the Dane law. In places like Yorkshire, Norse ancestry is still detectable in present-day Britons, while other regions saw more cultural than genetic impact. Yet, the Vikings weren't just warriors. They were traders, settlers, and rulers. They established towns, introduced new words into Old English, and even influenced local governance. The very days of the week, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, still echo the names of Norse gods, blending into the Anglo-Saxon world. But if the Vikings altered England's genetic and cultural landscape, the Normans transformed it entirely. In 1066, William the Conqueror's victory at Hastings marked the end of Anglo-Saxon rule. The Norman elite replaced the old aristocracy, bringing French customs, language, and new genetic contributions. However, unlike the Anglo-Saxon migration centuries earlier, 
the Normans didn't come in massive numbers. Their genetic impact was smaller, concentrated among the ruling class, but their cultural dominance was immense. English, once a purely Germanic language, absorbed thousands of French words, shaping the version we speak today. So, did the Vikings and Normans erase Anglo-Saxon identity? Not quite. Instead, they laid new influences onto an already mixed heritage. The Anglo-Saxon genetic core remained, but it adapted, absorbed, and evolved, just as it had for centuries before. The England that emerged wasn't a conquered land but a hybrid one, built on the legacies of many peoples. What if the past wasn't just something you read in history books, but something written in your very DNA? Imagine walking through the streets of London, Manchester, or Edinburgh, completely unaware that deep inside your cells lies a genetic map stretching back to the very first Anglo-Saxon settlers. Today, cutting-edge DNA research allows us to uncover these hidden stories, tracing the genetic footprints left by the early English and revealing just how much of their legacy remains in modern Britons. For centuries, historians debated the scale of the Anglo-Saxon migration. Was it a full-scale invasion? or did a small ruling elite simply impose its culture? DNA has finally given us the answer. Large-scale genetic studies show that in eastern and central England, up to 40% of modern ancestry can be traced directly to the Anglo-Saxons. But the percentage isn't uniform across Britain. The further west you go, to Wales, Cornwall, and Scotland, the Anglo-Saxon genetic influence fades, replaced by older Celtic lineages. This confirms what historical records hinted at. The Anglo-Saxon expansion was strongest in the east, gradually merging with native populations as it moved westward. But genetic studies don't just stop at broad percentages. They allow us to see movement, integration, and even social structures. Ancient DNA from early medieval cemeteries reveals fascinating details. Some individuals were almost entirely of Anglo-Saxon descent, while others carried a mix of native British and continental ancestry. This tells us that rather than replacing the local population, the Anglo-Saxons intermarried, slowly blending into the fabric of Britain. Even surnames and regional dialects hold genetic clues. Studies show that areas where Old English dialects remain strongest, like Yorkshire and Norfolk, often align with regions of high Anglo-Saxon ancestry. The same patterns emerge with certain Y-chromosome markers, genetic signatures passed down from father to son, closely matching those found in Germany and Denmark, the very lands where the Anglo-Saxons originated. But here's the real question. Does having Anglo-Saxon DNA change what it means to be British today? In truth, genetics is only one piece of the puzzle. Britain's history is one of continuous change. Roman, Anglo-Saxon, Viking, Norman, and beyond. What DNA reveals is not a rigid identity, but a fascinating journey of people, cultures, and stories that continue to evolve. The real legacy of the Anglo-Saxons isn't just in our genes, it's in the language we speak, the traditions we follow, and the deep historical connections that shape Britain to this day. Think about this. How much of who you are is shaped by the past? Not just your culture, language, or traditions, but the very DNA that makes you, you. The Anglo-Saxons arrived on British shores over 1,500 years ago. But their story didn't end when the Viking raiders came or when the Normans took over in 1066. Their genetic legacy endured, passing down through generations, shaping the population of Britain today in ways most people never realize. So what does modern science tell us? Large-scale genetic studies reveal something astonishing. Nearly half of English ancestry can be traced back to the Anglo-Saxons. But what's even more fascinating is how this genetic imprint varies across the UK. In the east of England, where Anglo-Saxon settlements were strongest, DNA evidence shows a higher percentage of Northern European markers, closely matching regions in modern-day Germany, Denmark, and the Netherlands. But in Wales, Scotland, and the west of England, this influence declines, replaced by the older Celtic and Romano-British lineages that survived the waves of migration. But genes don't just tell us about ancestry. They reveal how people lived, how they moved, and even how they were treated in society. Genetic studies on early medieval cemeteries show clear signs of intermarriage between Anglo-Saxons and native Britons, proving that this wasn't a simple case of invasion and replacement. Instead, the Anglo-Saxons blended into local populations over time, creating a hybrid culture that formed the foundation of what would later become England. And that legacy extends far beyond DNA. Many everyday words in English, house, bread, 
friend, even the word England itself, come directly from Old English, the language of the Anglo-Saxons. The legal systems, land divisions, and even place names that define Britain today have their roots in Anglo-Saxon traditions. And while their kingdoms may have fallen, their influence on British identity has remained remarkably strong. But here's the final thought. History isn't just about the past, it's alive within us. The Anglo-Saxons may have lived over a millennium ago, but their genes, their language, and their culture continue to shape the world we live in. Whether through the DNA passed down through generations, or the words we speak every day, their legacy is still very much a part of us. And that's the true story of Anglo-Saxon heritage, one that doesn't just belong in history books, but in the very fabric of Britain today.